Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Espen. Thank you so much for coming back. Uh, it's great to have you. How you been? I'm been great. How are you? I'm I'm doing pretty well. I'm uh, I'm you know feeling feeling very fortunate to have uh, some nice weather in Portland. Um, I'm feeling you know cautiously optimistic that uh, that we are. We're seeing like some positive lasting impact in the world right now. Um, you know, that's uh, like is is. It's good. It's good. How about how about you? How uh, how are you holding up out there? Yeah, pretty good. Sun shining in San Francisco and. Uh, yeah, been uh, been uh, social distancing for a while, so yeah, nice to see some faces even on video chat. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I get that for sure. Um, well, yeah. So, uh, so you've been on the show before. Um, we've talked about sanity, but for those who are not familiar with uh, with your work and also with sanity, do you want to do a um, kind of a, a, a high level overview? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm Espen, and uh, I've been working at Sanity since the start of our little company that's been growing rapidly. Uh, we're sort of a content platform, uh, which uh, is a fancy way of saying that we have a database in the cloud where you can store all your content. And then we have a really kick-ass uh, like a headless CMS that you can put on top of that to manage all your data. And uh, yeah, just getting a lot of things for free in that sort of platform. Um, all things from like assets to uh, APIs for fetching that data and manipulating that data with like very fine grained patches. Yeah. History API history APIs for actually you know, introspecting what's been going on for those documents, all sorts of things. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So um and, and what I like about Sanity is I, I've always been a fan of the sorry, I gotta turn the brightness down on my monitors here. They're way too bright. Let's go. All right. Um so what I what I like about Sanity is that Sanity is fast to get started with, and it's completely customizable. Like you, you know, you you just kind of go in and define a, a schema for your your site, and that's really nice because one of the things that always bugged me about like WordPress or something is it felt like I was going in and I was forcing a blog post to be something else. Um, and so with Sanity, there's a little bit more setup to it. It's not like magically done um, in, unless you use a starter. But what you're doing is you're saying, I have this type of content and I want it to do exactly this. And you're building that. You're not saying, well, I want to treat my blog post with these extra fields like a custom type of content. Um, yeah. And so that, you know, that's a really nice experience. I also like that you're building the back end in JavaScript, um, which, you know, it feels familiar. It doesn't feel like I'm going way outside of my my expertise by diving into, you know, PHP or, or, you know, Ruby or something like that. Um, so, you know, that, that has always made it feel a little more approachable. And then it's just got some nice, like, just polish on it. You know, the, the real time stuff is really nice seeing things update. Uh, you know, I've got, uh, I, like I run the learn with Jason website on sanity. And the nice thing is that when I'm in there, I've also got, um, Anna helps me out with, with content and updates and stuff. And when she's in there, I can see those updates happening. I don't have to remember to like refresh the page or anything. It just kind of goes live for me and I can see that. So it's really nice for, for a collaborative environment as well. Um, yeah. But I, but something that we talked about that I hadn't really considered, but that we're going to do today is that sanity is also good for storing user input. Um, so you can actually use sanity as a database, which, whoa, I didn't, I'd never really considered that. So can you talk a little more about that? Yeah. So uh, the database is a sort, of, sort of a schemaless database at this point. Uh, you can put any kind of JSON document in there, pretty much. And uh, because of that, you and because of the mutation system, you're not really limited to uh, you're not limited to what you've defined in your schemas. You can actually just start uh, fill, like importing data uh, directly to the database without defining any schemas up front. And um, because it's like arbitrary uh, schemaless, then you can just start iterating on content. So it works pretty well for uh, user-generated content, though it's like uh, so far we've been focusing more on the like um, the structured content aspect mm -hmm. of it, which is the why we're uh, focusing on the CMS right now. 
but you can put it in pretty much any, anything in there. So, uh, so you can use it for user generated content, obviously why uh, just watching out for uh, not allowing anyone to submit absolutely anything. You still want to sure. have some kind of validation of some kind of uh, spam prevention or something in front of there. Absolutely. All right, so um, we're going to switch over and, and do that for just a minute. But first, let's say thank you very much for the the, the bits, Florin. I appreciate it. Um, it's great to see everybody in the chat. What is up? How are you all doing? And don't forget that we have live captioning for the show. So White Coat Captioning is on the call. They're doing captions live. It's at lwj.dev slash live. You'll be able to watch the show there with live captions underneath. Um, thank you so much for that. And that is made possible by the sponsors of the show. So thank you to Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Sanity, who uh, are, are generously contributing to Learn with Jason to make it more accessible to more people, which is just incredible. So thank you very, very much for that. Um, with that, you want to write some code? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. So let's go over to this view. And uh, so this is... This is Espen's Twitter. You should go and follow. Um, and oh, so we would need to add code. Is that right? <laughs> that is correct. We would need to add some code. Uh, and this is the Sanity website. So if you're unfamiliar with Sanity, go check that out. There's some there's some cool stuff on here. Um, but for a quick overview, we're gonna we're gonna dive into it right now. So I have a terminal. Uh, I've got my browser open. I'm ready to start. You tell me. What would it be our first step here if we're going to start empty folder? We want to get a site up and running. Uh, the first part would be installing the the um, the sanity uh, command line interface. So, okay, uh, so I'm going to npm. And, yep. And At what sanity slash cli? Okay, so I'm uh, I'm doing a global install of the sanity cli. Yep. Okay, and it looks like I've got version 1.149.16, which I hope is the, the most recent one. That's the recent one, yeah. All right, so let's, uh, so now I'm in a folder here. Do I need to create a new folder for the project or should I? No, you can just, uh, you can just do sanity in it here. And okay. it will prompt you to where you actually want to place it. So. Uh-oh. Unauthorized. Okay, so I need oh, to log in. To, uh, you might have been logged in uh, previously, so for try doing sanity logout first. Sanity logout. Okay. And then doing sanity in it again. Okay. All right. Pretty sure I've done this before. I am now logged in. All right. So here I go. Uh, I'll put it under. Let's create a new project, actually. Uh, we're going to call this something that I'll remember later, Sanity User Content. Default dataset configuration, is that correct? Yeah, so uh, at this point I guess I, we should explain that because there are two modes uh, right now which are either public datasets or private datasets. And, uh, uh, public data sets basically means that anyone can query for uh, documents that are published within the data set without using any sort of author authorization token. Okay. Um, so in this case, it depends on what you want to put in there, but I guess we can start with a private data set and then Do we... actually no, we want to fetch some data in the front end maybe later. Yeah. So like, let's go for a public one. So yeah. Okay. So do a default. Do the default creating a data set. Uh, my output path is, hmm, if I just type a different folder name, will it be relative? Yeah. Okay, so let's go sanity user content. And can I start clean or do you want me to start with a, with a default? Uh, I recommend going with a blog just because it has a uh, it just has a schema, so it's easier because you have some kind of reference for the different schema types okay. or what the fields look like. So it's just uh, you don't have to bounce back and forth to documentation uh, unless you're like really familiar with Sanity, in which case a clean project is usually a good idea. But good. sometimes it's good to have some some kind of reference for those schema files. 
I'm, I'm seeing some uh, some flaps and some grows in the in the chat. Remember that you can you can run grow and it will grow my beard. Um, and if you grow it enough, there's a little treat that Cassidy built on that that stream. So uh, you'll have to coordinate though, because you can only run grow so many times. Um, <laughs> so you got to get in there, spam that chat, get in there. Um, all right. So now I have a a sanity project in. It's going. It's all good. Uh, we got success. Now what? I like that. Uh, so I'm going to move into my sanity content. Sanity docs. To, oh, wow. That's a, that's a nice touch. I like that. Good. I'm going to move that over into this browser so I don't lose track of it. Um, what else? We can do sanity manage to open the project settings in a browser. Um, we can explore the CLI manual and we can start. So what would you recommend as the, the first, first start? Um, so I guess we'll need some kind of schemas, um, or figure out what kind of, what we're building and what the, the content model should be. So, yeah. So chat. Uh, we were thinking, what uh, what should we build today? Like, what wh what is something that you think would be fun to allow? Like, here, so here's our goal, right? What we want to do is we want to build something today that before this episode is over, we can deploy and y'all can play with. hackers, you you dirty hackers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so what? Uh, <laughs> Where are we? Did we get lost? Um, all right. So we, yeah. So we need an idea. What? Uh, okay. Guest book. That's a good idea. Uh, Newt, though, you're seeing the chat. You work at Sanity. That's uh, you, you can't it's teeing up ideas. <laughs> um, beard care products with reviews. <laughs> what do we want to do as hackers? Adopt a party corgi. Ooh, I like that. Um, ooh, how would that work? Yeah, do. Hmm. Hmm. If you wanted to adopt a party corgi, let's see. A recipe book would be cool. Um, a recipe book, I love the idea of that. That's actually something that I want to build. I'm worried that the schema for a recipe is going to be complex enough to take too long. Um, unsplash photos of corgis and fake names. Ooh, name suggestions for corgis. How about that? <laughs> I like that. That's uh, with realistic bios. <laughs> I'm into it. Okay, so I, I I like that idea because that'll be fun. Because what we can do is um, like, what if we we post a photo? So we we store a photo in Sanity of a corgi, um, and we'll grab photos from Unsplash, and then we can allow people to submit suggested names for that corgi yeah um so that's kind of a fun idea and then hmm am i getting too ambitious because what i'd love to do is have suggested names and then people could vote on their favorite names uh-huh uh yeah i guess we could try maybe we invert that so what we could start with is we have the the corgi and then we'll come up with some suggested names and then we'll let people vote on their favorites and if we have extra time, we can allow for write-in submissions of names. Okay. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Um, <laughs> I'm very excited about this. So, uh, okay, so I've got my I've got my sanity project open. So by default, we've got a few folders here. Um, so it looks like we've got sanity start. We've got a test, some default dependencies. Um, the static folder is empty, so we can close that one up. This plugins folder is empty, so we can close this one up. And do we ever need to go into this config folder, or is that? No, usually not. It's, okay. Uh, it's usually for a plugin configs, which in this case it probably aren't going to be any. So okay. I think we should I'm be fine. Also gonna. Am I in? Okay, yeah. So let me create a new project here. And then I'm actually going to close this and reopen it so that we get, uh, I think everything was ignored, which is why everything was so dark in there. Hmm. There we go. That's better. Okay. Um, so this is this is a little better looking. That'll be easier for us to deal with. Um, let's get this out of here. And all right. So this is really the folder that we're working in, right? Is the schemas folder. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, what should I do first? So I guess we need to figure out the content model for this thing. So um, <clears throat> uh, I guess we can start by modeling the actual Corgi photos. I feel like that's okay. a good place to start. Um, so I'm going to create a file. I have no idea what goes in it yet, but I saw that everything else had a file name. So I'm just going to create corgi.js. Yeah. I guess if we uh, take, yeah, like a post or an author might be a good start, uh, just as a, uh, so you can see what the schemas look like. Okay. Uh, so, so we've got a couple of different like yeah, schema types in Sanity, uh, like the base types. And mm -hmm. one of those are the document type. That's like the ground ground level uh, type. That, one document represents like one entry into the database. Okay. So I'm going to call this a Corgi. We'll mm -hmm. give it a title of Corgi. And this is going to be a document, right? Yeah. Okay. So then we need fields. Fields is an array. Mm -hmm. Is there anything other than fields? Let's see. It looks like there's a preview. Yeah, that's optional. Uh, I guess okay. we can add that later. Well, we probably want to make uh, the photo uh, appear in the previews and stuff. Ooh, that'd be really nice. Yeah. Um, okay. So then we need, I think just uh, an image, right? Or do we need? Yeah. I mean, I uh, guess let's, we, let's think through this. So we need name that we, or do we just go to the, an image and then have people suggest names? So, well, and I guess the suggested names would actually be like in here. It would be like yeah, image so, suggested names. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe we should, because um, what you can do with documents is uh, reference them in other documents. You can create like actual relationships between documents. Okay. And given that people want to actually suggest names for for corgis, maybe we can model those as individual documents that reference this corgi, uh, okay. because then it's easier to actually vote them up and down. Makes sense. We could also just start in an array here, but then we'd be modif. Well, I guess the easiest thing would be to just model it all in here, to be honest, because then you'd have just one document per corgi, and all the vote things and all the names are in there. But at yeah. some point, you end up with like uh, 10,000 suggested names for a Corgi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which might be a little excessive, maybe. Yeah, I, I think if we were to look at this as like, what would a production app look like? We'd, we'd probably want some kind of a, an upper bound to that where we'd yeah. say like, hey, you know, this Corgi has 100 suggested names. We're probably not going to go any further than that. Yeah. Um, but I think we can, we can for this... For this yeah, demo, let's, let's let's say that are, there are no rules. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, we can create the corgi graph. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay, so if I want to create, it, it looks like we've got two. Like we're not really creating a a, or let's let's start with a simple thing because we what I want to show is the easiest thing, which is like a string, right? And and I think that because we're pulling from Unsplash we need to pull a, or we need to create a credit. Um, so we will include a photo credit and that will be a string. And so this is, this is like the simplest thing, right? So if I start, or, San, will Sanity Live reload the schemas as we, as we write and save? Like if I yeah. get this running and then open Sanity, we can kind of save and see as it, as it builds. Let's do that. Yeah, you just need to open schema.js and make sure that you import this file uh, and actually include it in the types array. Okay, so we'll import Corgi from oops, Corgi. And then these we're not going to use anymore. We're just using those for reference. So yeah. down here, I'm going to get rid of all of these. In fact, I'm just going to delete these. And we're yeah. just going to put Corgi in here. And then I'm going to delete these as well. Okay, so this is our, our you know, th this is how you actually tell Sanity what to do. So if I pull this over, um, we're bringing in, I don't exactly know how that, well, can, <laughs> do you want to talk about what that is? Uh, it's a little bit magic. Um, it's basically plugins are allowed to define or declare schema types. So uh, as Knut actually says in, this, in the 
commons here, we actually there's actually a asset source for Unsplash that we might want to use if we want to save some time, uh, which actually <laughs> integrates. Uh, but like that's one uh, example where a plugin can define a schema type, and uh, instead of having you explicitly import all of the schema types for those plugins. Uh, there's kind of a shortcut where you can just say import all of the declared uh, schema types and it will just get an array of those schema types. So, uh, nice. Yeah, I kind of forgot about this one. But yeah, you can, uh, if, if you want, we can... Uh, you know, I, I've i never used a, a plugin, so let's try it. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in here and I'm going to run sanity install asset source unsplash. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's doing things. It says it's installed. Good. And then, if you open, open sanity.json, uh, you should now see that because you installed it by using sanity install and not just uh, npm install, it'll add itself to the plugins array there. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so that so now, let's. Um, all right, so I've I've done this. I've got this running. I'm going to start. Sanity. And I'm going to do that using, I believe it was, do I just run sanity start? Yes. Okay. So now let's start up a, this is kind of what differentiates sanity from most headless CMSs is that this is actually running uh, locally as a like client side application. You can of course build it and deploy it uh, by just running sanity deploy or sanity build and, and then host that on Netlify or anything anywhere you want, it's just static files. But while you're developing, you're running this local development server. So you'll see that uh, changes that you do to the schemas and stuff are reflected in once you change do changes. OK, so this starts with what we, like this is what we created, right? We've got our photo credit. Yeah. Um, and so, the, and this is what I think is really cool, right? Is that we, so we created this content type of Corgi and then you go in and you get a list of all of your corgis and you get your photo credits. Um, and so if we go in and modify this, like let's just go mess with it a little bit. I'm going to create a new type and we'll call this boop. And it rebuilds, it restores, and it's right there. So this is really, really nice as a, as a content creator. Um, I can go in and just say like, hey, I need a new field on this. And I just, you know, add, I copy paste a section of my schema and it just immediately shows up. Um, and that, like, that is really, really nice. So yeah, all like JavaScript, you can also compose this in ways that's very hard to do in uh, other solutions because you can make like a function which takes some parameters and then generates a bunch of fields or make localization, localization fields by... Yeah, just running functions and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Oh, interesting. Look at the boops getting stuck up there. That's weird. I wonder oh. what I did. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I I started uh, rebuilding the the boop thing because I've I've got a a whole project that's um it's like tools for streamers and and uh, yeah, I broke that one I guess. <laughs> oh, cool <laughs> Whoa! Look, at, I totally broke it. How did I even do that? That's amazing. Okay, hold on. I gotta just let's just let's just defy gravity for a minute. <laughs> let's drop a bunch of these. Ooh. <laughs> I have literally no idea how I did that, but I'm very into it. Um <laughs> Okay. So uh so anyways, we've we've uh rewritten the laws of physics today. Let's let's write this schema. So I've got a photo credit, um, but it looks like we can use the the sanity plugin. So yeah. if I want to use this, what do I do? Uh, that's a good question. I actually haven't used it before, so it'll be interesting. Um... It's an asset document, so I don't need that. How do I actually just like use it? Uh, you should do this one. I, uh,
Does anyone know? I will attempt to figure it out. <laughs> um. I guess we might need some kind of API key. I don't know. Uh, or maybe you don't for this particular one. I don't, I'm not I, familiar with it. Well. I do have an API key. So part name. No API key needed. Um, uh, okay. Unsplash will come as an option for the image type. So we just do a regular image type. Uh, I guess so. Yeah. OK. OK, we should probably update that. that. Those docs well, a little bit. With, uh, let's just start with adding an image. Uh, OK. Date. So if I want to add an image, I do, let's see, I think there's one in here. So let's, there's a main image. So let's call this name uh, Corgi image. And then we'll give it a title of Cor Corgi. And then type image. And option, I don't think we're, we can just leave the options out, right? Like. Yeah, we don't... we should start with this. I think it's uh, okay. So I've saved, sure. which means that in here, here is our new setup. Let me make this from. bigger. Select from Unsplash. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. That's extremely cool. Um, let's pick a good corgi. Let's see. I've used this one before. That's a good corgi. And did it give me the credit? Uh, yeah, I think uh, if you um, if you click on the the hamburger menu, you open the upper right, uh, and then do inspect. You might see, yeah, you'll see that the corgi image is a reference to uh, an image document, and I okay. think that image document has the credits uh, embedded in it. But it's a reference, so you can't actually like follow it right now. Okay. Um, but if you uh, if you do if you click on vision, we can actually take a look at the actual document that was inserted into the database. If I click on what now, vision, uh, the vision tool, yeah, and we can write a query. So if we oh. do, uh, maybe this is jumping a little deep right away. But I've like, uh, I'm I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even know that button existed. So we're yeah. we're all learning today. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, we can write a what we call a Grok query. That's like our freeform query language that looks kind of like GraphQL, but it, you don't okay. have to declare a schema for it to work. So if you do star, then uh, that will give you uh, any document in the database. Um, and if you uh, so actually try just running that and seeing what you'll get. So you can see a bunch of, um, you'll see the first one here is the Corgi uh, document that we created. And the second one here is the actual sanity image asset, which now holds the credit line mm -hmm. and a bunch of metadata. So it has like a low quality image placeholder. It has um, palette information, all kinds of stuff that you might use in a front end. Perfect. OK, so I found that. Um, so that works. And so now if I publish this, and I, I wanted to do this specifically because I also want to show what happens when we start adding fields to like publish documents. Um, so now we've got this. And then the other thing that we need is we need to uh, have a, like a, an arbitrary number of suggested names and a vote count. Um, so if we want to build that, I would need to add a new type. And I, so I can come up with the name part. So this would be like suggested names. Um, and we'll give it a title of suggested names. And then I don't know what to do because it's not an array, right? I mean, it, it kind of is an array because uh, you just want uh, you just want a name and a number of votes, all right? So it can be yeah. an array of objects, I guess. Okay. So if I do a type array, yeah, looks like there's one here. 
and that says it's an array of and I don't know what this means so let me pull this open a little bit yeah so you can either if you're referencing other documents then it's a type reference but in okay. this case it's actually just an embedded document like you, or an embedded object okay so um, if we want to do this in the like proper way we make a new uh, schema type for that but uh, just a short if you just want something uh, right away then you can actually just inline the type declaration here yeah so if you uh, off type object and do i need the array always uh yeah okay. i think it'll work without it but it's better for because uh, it's easier to expand if you want multiple types there at some point and then do i need like the name and title and uh, yeah, you need a name. Name would be uh, suggested name, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if you need the title, but I guess we can we can see what happens, and then um, do I I set fields? Uh, yeah. Okay, and so then the uh, the first one is going to be the name, um, which is the name. Title would be name. And the type is a string. Okay. And then the next one would be votes. Title is votes. And the type is, is it number? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see if that worked. Suggested name. So I'm going to add a name and we will call this. What do you think, chat? What's what's the right name for this corgi? Maybe we should name it after the person who suggested this whole corgi thing in the first place. Oh, Frank is the suggested name. I don't know. I think I I think I like that Crispus <laughs> Corgi. So we'll start with we'll start out with one name. Uh, <laughs> Okay, then we've got Frank and Roger. Okay, so the, that's three suggested names. And now we've got, like this is, you know, this is basically what we're after, right? We've got this photo, we've got a photo credit, and we've got suggested names with a vote count. And if we go into one of these, we can see the vote counts. Okay, perfect. Probably you don't even need the, like the credits uh, field can actually just be uh, fetched from the referenced assets. So we don't really actually need the photo. Oh, code. that's a good point. Okay, so let's simplify then. Let's, uh, let's just drop that out. You'll now see that you have a field which is not declared in your schema. So if mm -hmm. you go to the bottom here, you'll see that it found an unknown field. So you might want to uh, just unset that. Just get rid of it. So, and this is another thing that I think is cool is like, I literally just deleted data, right? And instead of just forgetting that it exists, Sanity is letting me know, hey, you just got rid of some data. Are you sure that's what you meant to do? So I could go back and re-add this field if I wanted to to pull the data back in. Uh, but since we meant to do that, we know it's what we're doing. We're going to drop it. So now I have a corgi and suggested names. So let's play with previews real quick because I think that's that's a pretty interesting thing to do. And yeah. can we show the the corgi image and then also maybe in the suggested names we could show the votes as well? Sure. Okay. Uh, so if I want to do that, I go down to here and I type in preview. And then if I look at the bottom, this is an object, yeah. and I don't know what to do next. So select is uh, is the one that chooses sort of what you want, which fields you want to select. Because uh, in a real time setting, uh, and because the documents can be very very large, uh, you don't want to fetch like all the data that's possibly available. Because if you, let's say you have a thousand documents in a list view, you don't want to fetch like. A, huge blob of text for each of those, for instance. So you just want the ones that you actually are going to use. OK. Um, so some of these fields are have special meaning. So like media is you generally used for automatically figuring that out. But you can also uh, provide a prepare function, which then gets the data that you selected. And then you okay. can like, modify 
file out. So if I just save this, will this just work? I think so. Nice. Okay. And then if I wanted to, uh, this might be a little, maybe we don't want to do this. I was thinking we could pull the credit out and stick it in as this untitled since we don't have a title field. Um, yeah. That would be an example of the prepare function. Uh, actually, do um, title, and then if you do corgi image dot asset dot credit line, was it? Yeah. Is that going to just work? Might, hopefully. Holy crap! Okay, I was all ready to make this complicated, and you it, see. <laughs> All right. Okay. So then the next thing is we've got our fields here. And so under our fields, we can just add a preview here as well, right? Yeah. And then for the... So this is what I talked about when you, at some point, you probably want to break this out into a separate schema type. So you can use yeah. uh, like more separate, more easily separated, but yeah. Okay. So then for the title, I want the name. Um, and then I would, do I just also get the, like, votes yeah, like this? The number of votes, uh, you can do, actually you can do, if you just want the number of votes, I mean, you just don't want a number, you probably want some text saying number of votes or something, but if you just want the number, you can just do subtitle of votes, uh, but you probably want some let's, kind of... Let's start uh, there and let's see if we can... That's super cool. Okay. So then if I didn't want to do that though, I would I would do like votes and then I would need a prepare function, right? Yeah. Or... Yep. And so for my prepare, I really just want or no. I want the whole yeah, selection. And votes. But uh, yeah. And then I would return selection and subtitle would be Selection, votes, no, we would do it like this, right? Yep. Beautiful. I love it. It's uh, like, it's, it's one of those things that like, it's, it's such a minor thing to be able to do that, but to be able to customize what your, your like heads up display looks like is just such a convenient thing. It makes it so nice. Um, so let's go, um, let me just silence this real quick. Discord's making noise. Um, okay. So, uh, we've got preview set up. So I think let's, let's take this thing online. Let's, um, let's maybe, okay. So let's, let's say I'm going to publish this and I'm going to add one more or no, let's not, let's not, we'll just do one. We're going to do one Corgi. We're going to put this thing on a web page and we're going to allow people to vote. And we've got about 45 ish minutes to make that happen. So from here, I have, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Let's take these, get rid of them. Let's take this, get rid of that. Okay. So now we have a, a standalone schema. We're ready to rock and roll. Um, so we need to create a website, right? No. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to stop this for now. And then I'm going to come back out here. How, how do you usually do this? Do you put like both into the same repo? Do you? It's totally up to you. I I have my opinions, and a lot of my teammates have different opinions. I generally don't like to mix uh, front ends and back ends, but I know some people really like to like combine it into one thing. I just think it's easier in terms of dependencies and stuff to figure out and maintain two different uh, code paths for the front end and back end. Mm -hmm. I can see that. That makes sense. So let's do that then. We'll we'll bring it back out. And then I'm going to make a directory called uh, sanity user content front end. And we'll move into it. Nope, not that one. OK. 
Okay. And then in here, we will get init. Um, let's change that. How do I do this? Git branch move. Nope. Git. Oh, here it is. Git checkout B main. There we go. All right. So now we are in a, uh, a brand new repo and we can, how do we want to build this? Let's build it with something simple. Oh, I, oh, hold on. I did a whole thing for this. I have a, I, I have a whole, whole new repo that I'm really excited about. Um, I built a demo, like a demo base for, uh, for demos and stuff that is just, it's kind of, it's like a template repo, right? And so I'm going to create a new copy and we'll call this uh, sanity user content front end. Um, we'll make it public and I'm going to create a repository from template. And that is really cool. Very cool. And now if I copy this, uh, let me actually just go back out. We're going to remove front end and then I'm going to get get clone. Then we can open this up as well. All right. So demo demo. Um, so in here, what this basically did is it took, uh, it just, it like gives me a, a plain slate where we can write whatever code we want in here, add styles and we can add scripts. Um, and then we can, we can call this whatever we want. So let's do sanity user generated content or actually let's make that into a real sentence and this will be sanity user content front end and i'll deal with the rest of that later so we can just drop these okay drop that all right so now from here we're we're pretty much set to do whatever we need to do um, and this is all set up to run locally, uh, so that we can build whatever we want. And if we do something like this, or actually we'll just do, it's a liquid template, right? So we can say, uh, user generated content insanity. All right. And then let's start it. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to install my dependencies. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So now we have a running demo. Look at that. It's beautiful. beautiful. Um, so I'm ready to rock. Let's, uh, let's, let's make a site out of our, our Corgi image. And we're going to do that by what well, we want to start by probably loading the data, right? Yeah. Okay. So we've got a sanity client. I would recommend using that to okay. get started. All right, so to get that, I'm going to npm install uh, sanity slash client. Yep. Okay, do I need anything else? No. Okay. And then is, is this going to do the fetching, or do I need like a fetch? Oh, it'll do, do it all. It'll okay. do fetch and all kinds of stuff. Excellent. All right, so uh, I'm assuming we're doing this in a serverless function, right? I mean, you could just fetch it from directly from the front end if you want. It's totally up to you. Does that, would that expose like keys though? Uh, no, because we chose uh, to have the data set public, you cannot query for it without any uh, API keys. Even for writing? Not for writing. Uh, if we want to vote, then we want a function. But if we want to just load to the oh, kernel, I I understand. Uh, okay. All right. Let's. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's do that. I. 
Don't okay. So the, is the sanity client React based? Uh, yeah. Okay. No, the client isn't actually. The client is totally agnostic, so they can use anything you want there. Okay. I am low key convinced that this isn't going to work with this demo because I don't know that I can just like import, uh, <laughs> import no, any front end. I, I don't know if I can import node modules. I should probably test that. Um, let's. Let's do it in a function because I know for sure that'll work, and then I'll figure this out for future demos to make sure I don't break things. Okay. Oh wait. Oh, Newt's got us. Newt's got us covered. Let's do it. Um, he found data fetching in Sanity for Eleventy, which is what the demo is based on, and so we can just pull it straight in. Excellent. All right. So we're going to create a data folder, and inside of it, we're going to create corgis or corgis.js. And inside of that, we don't need block content, um, but we do need the sanity client, which it looks like is configured elsewhere. Yeah, it's probably just uh, set it set up with some uh, uh, projects ID and data sets, I assume. That's usually how it's done. OK. Cool. Yeah. So we're only going to have the one. So I'm probably going to set this up in the same project. So let's get um, sanity client equals require sanity client. And then we get the config. Yeah, we can just hard code that for now. But yeah, you can just do sanity client and then. Uh, okay. Then you need the project ID and the data set. OK. And so those I, are located in the, if you go to the studio folder, you'll see the sanity JSON file has. Uh, um, so the sanity client, and then we need some config. And you said the uh, uh, sanity JSON. Folder, Here we go. There, yeah. So the API section there has the data set and product. Yeah. Okay. So I need uh, those values. And then you can also set use CDN true. Uh, that'll stop it from complaining because you haven't uh, decided whether or not you should use the CDN. <laughs> okay. Use CDN true. And then do I need? I don't have a token. Because yeah, so you don't really need that token right now because you're only okay. fetching data for a public data set. So, uh, but if you have a private data set, then you want to set up uh, some kind of token to be able to read those things. Got it. Also, if you have drafts that you want to read from, then you also need a token. Oh, uh, so okay. I get it. Depends I get on it. how you how you model this. Um. Oh boy. We, um, well, this is very like this is a big query. You don't really need that whole big query. You just need client.fetch and then give it some query, and uh, that'll give you the data that you want. So I can guide you through the actually fetch, and then the query. The query is uh, for fetching all corgis. That would be a star, uh, so a string that has a star and then a bracket, like square brackets. Bracket. Uh, and then say underscore type equals uh, corgi, or double equals corgi, sorry. Double equals. Yeah, and uh, corgi has a string. So uh, like double quotes around the corgi. OK. So that will get all corgis. And that will return a promise. Async function load corgis. And then we can await this. All right. Um, and so when we await it, it's going to give us back. It's going to give you an array of uh, Corgi documents. Oh, perfect. So we don't have to do any like additional follow on stuff. All right. So let's add the catch just in case, th case things go wrong. So if something goes wrong, we're going to console.law or console.error the error. All right, and otherwise, we can just return that? Yeah. Yes. OK, so let's return that. 
for ease. Um, and then down here, we can say uh, the data that we want is just exporting that. So module.exports load corgis. Okay, and then in here, we should be able to just get those posts so we can go up into the sanity stuff, just look at the posts, which are gonna be somewhere around here, probably archive. Set post list is collections.myPost. So I think what we can probably do actually is do like a um, for Corgi in collections, Corgis. Uh, and then we can just like pre, can I just JSON stringify this? Let's look at the post list. Post list. Um, Now uh, we just we know what the we know what the data looks like. So let's just put um, do like an image source equals uh, corgi dot corgi image dot asset dot crap. Do you know what that one's called? Hopefully asset is um, asset is a reference. So if we want that to be um, um, sort of. If we want the entire asset document, we actually have to modify the query a bit to actually follow that reference. Um, so if we go, I think we need to go in and modify the query for a bit. Okay. Uh, so let's go into corgis.js. Yeah. So uh, now you're stuck with the raw like corgi documents. And what we need to do is add a projection. So to specify which fields we want uh, to fetch from that and do any kind of like follow any references that we might need. So if you add okay. a curly brackets at the end of that. Like this? Yep. Yeah. And then uh, if you can, you can select all the fields of, the, of those documents by doing dot, dot, dot. going to make this a little easier to track here. And then if you do a comma and then a new line, then we're saying uh, we want all the fields and then we want for the asset field, oh, sorry, the, what was it, the Corgi image field? Yeah. So if you do Corgi image uh, and then a new square brackets, uh, sorry, um, it's curly brackets, and then do uh, dot dot dot, and then colon, or sorry, comma, and then asset, and then an arrow, which means it'll uh, follow that reference that's in the our single single arrow. Like that? Yeah. So that'll say it'll follow the s or materialize the asset reference. So that should work. Okay. So I'm going to just log this because I am yep. not going to lie. I'm kind of like mystified by what just happened. So let's stringify corgis null two. All right. And then I'm going to come out here It'll be easier to show you inside of the studio at some point. Oh but, yeah. Uh, let's, let's do that. Let's uh, let me open another tab and then let's go into uh, Learn with Jason, and it was the sanity user content, and I'll sanity start. All right. And then we can go in here and just take this query, and let's open up our studio once this finishes. There it goes. All right, so that's open here, somewhere here. All right, so I'm going to go back to vision. I'm going to run this query. Yeah. So if you do, yeah. So now you'll see that it has the core game image now. If you expand that asset, that has the entire document. Uh, but if okay. you don't do that, if you just remove the assets arrow thing 
in the query, you'll see that you'll just get the, um, it just has the, the asset is now just a, a reference, reference. reference is that. So that's the, and then of course, if be behind that arrow, you can also choose to do another projection. So if you just want the credit line and not like all of those uh, fields, which you might not use, then you can do like in projection and then just say credit line. So I would want the credit line and I would also want um, this URL, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you need a, um, a comma after credit line. So I get my asset, I get my credit line and my URL. Okay, that's nice. I like that. Um, and then I also need really in here, all I need is the, like the suggested names. So that simplifies our result, which is nice. Yeah. Um, so I get the image, I get the suggested names. That's great. Okay. I also want to select the ID of this Corgi just to, mm -hmm. um, so it's underscore ID, which is the, the sanity document ID property. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's take that back in and run it. It also says that you might need some kind of define some kind of collection. I'm not too familiar with. Um, so I, th I think. I think what will happen with this Corgi's document is that it gets so this basically exports all of the the Corgi data as a Corgi's object, which I think just works in Sanity. I, I like, I know enough about Sanity to be dangerous and not enough to be like super knowledgeable. So <laughs> hopefully I don't get us into a bunch of trouble here. Um, and I'm definitely experimenting in production because this is the first time I've used this demo that I made. So <laughs> I really hope it doesn't turn out to be a huge waste of my time. <laughs> so um so then what we get back if we go look at the studio is we're going to get a result uh that's not part of the actual that's not part of it okay. so it will just be the array okay so then we want corgi image asset url yeah okay and then uh for the alt we'll do uh Corgi, Corgi, image, asset, uh, credit line. And then we'll end this and we'll make sure that it works. So let me save that and then I'm going to restart Netlify Dev over here. And it did work. Okay. So it at least didn't explode. So let's go see if it worked on the demo side here. It did not. And it didn't because I did something incorrect. Um, so let me go look at, let me go look at this starter and let's see what Newt did. Pagination posts. Well, I don't want pagination though. I just want the. I just want the data. And that should be available as front matter, which means maybe I can just do it in like this. There it goes. Okay. So yeah, so basically what we're doing when we export data like this is we're just putting it right into the like the general front matter object that uh, that's available to the templates. So that is cool because what that means now is that we've got our Corgi. So I can just do some basic styling here. Let's do a, um, we'll set the image to be with 100%. And I think that should solve that problem. Good. Okay, uh, and then we can tell it to also include, uh, we should probably like div class 
corgi. And then we can bump this out, move these over here. And underneath it, we want to have um, the suggested names. So let's do suggested names. And we'll do a, um, like, we're going to want to change the way that this is written, I think. But we can do uh, for um, name in Corgi suggested names. And then we'll end for. We should be able to do like a list item and we'll say that we want the name dot name and like name dot votes votes. Did that work? It didn't work. And it probably didn't work because I probably got something wrong. So in our studio we got back suggested names name votes corgi dot suggested names hmm hmm did it what if i just like corgi dot suggested names does that show up Okay, so that doesn't want to show up at all. Is it? Oh, I, I just screwed up entirely there. There we go. Um, so that was just a capitalization problem, so I can get rid of this. Okay, so there is our, our basic listing. We've got the, the corgi, and then next to the corgi, we have our, uh, our suggested names. And so to make this a little easier to read, Maybe what? Well, I'm not gonna write. I'm not gonna write CSS right now. I'll clean it up after, and we'll uh, we'll make it look a little bit nicer. But what I'm thinking is we can put the the corgi image to the left, and then the suggested names here with a, a vote button. But let's get a vote button put in, and then let's make it work. So I think what we can do is we can do something like this. That will be like uh, let's see. Hmm. We can say just a button. No. We'll call it an, it's a link because it's going to, how would I do this? Eco, are you in the chat? What's the, what's the accessible way to do this? Is it, we're going to click a button that's going to fire off a backend request and update the UI. That feels like a button to me, but it is taking you somewhere. So it might be a link. I'm going to, I think it's a button. Is it going to, are we going to refresh the page once to, to refresh the data or how does that it, work? It could, but I think. We'll probably do it asynchronously. It's a button because it performs an action. That was okay. That was what I thought. I'm. I'm. Thanks for confirming. Um, let's see. Vote for this name, and we would need to do something like uh, we need to add like data name equals or. Actually, do I want to include like a? Do we get a? Do we get a name or an ID for the the suggested yeah, names? The, uh, underscore key property on the suggested names, which you can use. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be unique, right? It's going to be unique for within that array. Okay, so I would still need the uh, the like data ID yeah. is going to be corgi dot. ID. Yeah. Okay. Did I miss something? I did. Nope. There we go. All right. So now if we go and look at this, we have a, a vote option. And then I can go and look in here to see that we've got the entry ID in our data and the key for this particular name in the data as well. So now what I want to do is uh, I want to actually send and like, I want to increment this insanity when someone clicks this button. So how would I do that? Yeah, so the client has a bunch of uh, mutation methods uh, okay. that's available to you. 
So we probably want to create some sort of function if that's how we were treating this. Um, so some kind of vote function, I guess. Okay, so we'll call this vote for name and then I'm gonna go in, uh, we're gonna duplicate things a little bit here, but I'm just gonna copy this across. Uh, for this thing, you will need a token because you're doing mutations, and so that will require you to. Okay. Let me just set up the the function here. Um, so if it succeeds, it's going to send back. Um, we should send back the total votes. Okay, uh, so I need to get a token, and I'm going to get that token here or somewhere else. Uh, you have to open manage.sanityio, or um, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll add this to the CLI at some point. We have just haven't gotten around to it yet. Okay, so this is also cool because it um, it like automatically created this in the hosted instance as well. Uh, which I think is pretty cool. So then I'm going to go to settings, I assume. Settings and API. API. Okay. And then should We've, be a token, sir. So we'll have to add a new origin when we deploy. But for now, I'm going to add a new token. It's read only. And this is going to be, or no, it's going to be a write token. So we want to be able to write and um, vote for names. Um, I probably want to pull this off screen, don't I? Yes. I'm going to add this token. OK. So I have now gotten my token, and it is uh, in my clipboard. And so I need to add a environment variable, which I will do in Netlify. So um, this is one of the things that I really like about this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Netlify open. And that's going to open my Netlify dashboard, which did it open yeah, in the it opened in the wrong window. I'll open it over here. Um, so I'm going to go here. We've got our new site. Oh, I haven't I haven't created this site yet. Is why that's not working. So I'm going to Netlify init, and I'm going to create and configure a new site. I'm going to put it on my own. Uh, and we wanted to call this sanity user content. Okay, so we've created a site. Uh, our build command, we're just going to leave these because the Netlify Toml actually does all the work for us. Um, okay, that's all set. So now, well, I'm already here, so I'll just refresh the page. So here's sanity user content. I'm going to go into my settings, and I've got my build and deploy. And environment variables, and how oh, nice! So Sarah built this uh, this cool thing that lets me like oh, nice. put in stuff without it's a an, an extension for blurring your your Netlify stuff. So I'm gonna call this Sanity. Does it need to have a certain name? Uh, not really. I mean, it depend, depends on your environment, but I guess for eleven D, it doesn't matter. I guess. Yeah. Okay. So then I can save that. Cool. That's saved, so I'm going to close it, and then if I rerun this, now it's pulling in that environment variable locally because I'm I'm logged in as me, so I don't have to deal with environment variables. I don't have to deal with like setting up a .n file. I can just put it on Netlify, and I know it's going to work. Um, and so that means that here, for our token, what's this one called? Token. It's just called token. And I can do api token. OK. Um, so then we are now able to do a write operation. And in this case, you should probably use CDN false. It doesn't really matter because you're just doing um, mutations. So it won't use the CDN anyway, but it's kind of confusing to have the wrong okay. value. So, yeah. OK. So um, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna send the uh, 
corgi ID and the key, I guess, to the to the function. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get the um, the corgi ID and then I'm just gonna call these corgi ID and name key. Um, and those are gonna come out of you or let's see, JSON parse event dot body. Okay, and then we need to send those off. And so to do that, we're going to do what? Client dot. So you've got a patch method. <clears throat> so that takes a, um, I was confused that you won't, don't get any sort of. Uh, so I have, method. I have turned off a lot of the auto suggest stuff because VS code gets so helpful that it's sometimes hard to live code. Okay. Uh, my my other VS Code instance has all that stuff, but for because so many things pop up, it can be a little hard to track what's going on. So I've disabled okay. most of it. So the first argument will be the document ID. So that will be Corgi ID. <laughs> look, look, chat. I am not. No, I, Vinny says I miss the days when I used to give out all my keys. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm getting secure, <laughs> right? Like the, we're running a professional shop over here. Um, that plug into blur environment variables, 100% yes, you can uh, you can find that. It is, um, what is it called? It is, let's look at extensions. Um, Chrome extensions. It is called Netlify Masker. And, uh, and Sarah built that for uh, hiding environment variables. So if you need it, go get it, it's in the store. Um, all right, so back to this. We're you said the first thing is just the Corgi ID. I don't have to pat. It's not like named. It's just a, the ID is what I'm setting. Yeah. Okay. And then it's. Uh, I think that's it for the uh, for the function. Then that'll return a patch instance. So you will call methods on this. Um, so the first thing that you uh, want to do here, I guess we need to then. So we need to increment the votes count within the array uh, that matches where the element matches a certain thing. So uh, mm -hmm. that's a little complicated. We'll have to use something called JSON match to do that. OK. So uh, we'll say uh, the method is inc, like increment. OK. And that will take an object. And then uh, the value here, or the key here, will be the attribute that we want to match. So um, that will be suggested names. Oh. And then it'll be. Right? Uh, no. Because suggested names is, a, is an array. So we need to figure, we need to find like the specific uh, key or element within that uh, within that array, right? Right. So yeah. So that was kind of what I was. What I was. Uh, should we go in here and try to write this? Um, I don't think we can. But uh, it, it's pretty. Uh, it should be straightforward. It okay. should be. Uh, so just names and then brackets like JSON notation for yeah, and then where underscore key. Uh, or not where, just like, uh, sorry, I'm pseudo coding in my head. Oh, just okay. underscore key uh, equals equals. And then double quotes. And then you have to sort of inject the name key here. So you probably want to use one of those. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Like so? Yeah. And then uh, one as the, because you want to increment it by one. Oh, okay. So so we're basically saying, well, that's kind of nice that it just does that. Why doesn't it like this? What did I miss? So just like, what are you unhappy with? This is an object. Let's look at the console. Property assignment expected. That's what I did. Am I missing something obvious? Are you? 
Oh, right. Because it's a yeah, union bracket. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. And then this will retur still be returning the patch instance. So in theory, you uh, might add like multiple uh, patch operations to this. <clears throat> but since we're done with this now, you can do dot commit to actually send this off. Like that? Yeah. And okay. uh, the commit method has a couple of properties. Uh, you can just call it like this, and that will wait for it to actually be uh, uh, sort of stored and uh, be available to the search store. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's a good default. And that will return a uh, promise. So uh, you might want to await that, I guess, before you actually do the response, just in case. Uh, it, is it going to give me back the updated object? It will give you back the entire document at this point. OK. The entire okay. document being the the individual corgi that was updated. Yeah. Okay. So if I get my corgi, then I should be able to say, um, let's get the votes. Uh, new votes equals corgi dot suggested names dot find, and then we can do the name key equals name key. And then we can return new votes. Uh, dots. Is that right? I guess. What's that? Dot votes, I guess, because uh, now you're. Oh, just... yeah. Yes. Good call. All right. So now we have the new votes total. Um, we're returning that as total votes and calling this we need to pass in the corgi ID and the name key. So in here, I need some JavaScript. So let's write a function that is update vote, or I guess send vote. And that is going to take, it's going to get an event because it's going to be an event handler. Um, and we will event dot prevent default. And then we need to get these values. And those are going to be um, you know, uh, I saw a minute ago that Eco suggested making these into just a full on form. And that's actually a really good idea because what that's going to allow me to do is uh, is put in instead of using data keys, I can do hidden inputs. Oh yeah. Uh, name is going to be what was it? Corgi ID, and the value would be name key. Uh, corgi dot ID. Oh, Probably. yep, wrong one. Yeah. Okay, so let's get that one in here. And then the other one was called name key. Okay. So now we will be able to um, handle the submit action for these forms. Okay. And inside of them, we will be able to, uh, we'll get, let's see. So we'll do like the const uh, data equals new form data event dot target. And then we can get the corgi ID and the name key from data. No, we can't, not like that. We're instead going to do it as data.get corgi ID. And same thing here, data.get name key. And so this is this is the uh, the form data API, which is awesome. Learned about it from Suze Hinton. Um, and that means I can also get rid of this. Aha. All right. So now we have the ability to submit these. So I need to then send it off to something. So I'm going to use the fetch API. And our result is going to be await fetch. 
and we're going to send it to dot Netlify functions and vote for name. And what we're going to send is a post. Uh, we're going to set, we could set the content type. Um, I'm not going to stress about it because we don't really need to. We can just, you know, send it as JSON. Uh, and I'm going to send in the Corgi ID and the name key. Okay, and then what we get back is going to be a result that we want to get in JSON. Um, and then if anything goes wrong, we'll catch that. <clears throat> All right, so then uh, from here, we would need to update our thing. And I'm thinking that the way we want to do that is probably to have a span class votes so that we can just update the inner text of that vote. Um, and then the thing that we're gonna have to figure out is how to get into the, I guess we can just do it in the like, yeah, we can do it like this. We'll do uh, the vote node is going to be event.target.query selector votes and then we can do vote node dot inner text equals result hmm uh, let's just change that to like 37 and make sure that it works and I'm going to console log the result so that we can see what format comes back then we need to um, document query selector all form and then add event listener for clicks that is send vote. I think that'll work. Does that work on collections? I didn't know. Great question. We're about to find out. Nope, it just sent that off for everything. No, wait, that's that's all something else. What? Yeah, you can't. Okay, so that, I was wrong. Um, so instead, we'll do const forms equals. And then we need to... Uh, this isn't... Can you just iterate, like, forms dot for each. Uh, yeah, that doesn't seem right. All, I guess I never remember which. I guess it's an iterable thing. Yeah. Oh, you have a for each. Yeah, it should be a for each. Is that gonna work? Let's see. So. I hope this works. Um. So let's fire off a vote and let's see what happens. Uncaught. Failed to construct form data. Parameter one is not of type form element. Yeah, Eco, I'm still going to have to loop because I'm going to have, like, if there's multiple corgis, we would have multiple forms. So it still needs to kind of define the given thing. And then I, yeah, the, the radio, I think, would be a pain in the butt. So instead... Oh, yeah. A click it should be a submit, right? Because now. Oh you're... yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, it definitely should. Okay. Hey. Okay, so we got closer. Got a, a not found for vote for name, which I think maybe I need to stop and restart because we added that after we'd started the function. Let's see. Let's try it. It did update, so we're we're close. Yeah. Still doesn't like that vote for name. It doesn't like vote for name. Functions vote for name. Are you running function server is running? But vote for name, did I typo something? 
you have to actually deploy or anything for them to be available? Oh, I opened the wrong server is why. Oh. <laughs> okay, so then we get back total votes equals one. That is dope. Okay, so yeah, this is great. I'm so excited about this. So now, now we have uh, here, we can set this to result total votes. Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, it's working. Okay. So now if I refresh, it must be, oh, you know what it is? It's because 11 D only runs the first time. Yeah. Hmm. How would we do that? We would need to do like a. Just for, uh, can you go into the vote for name uh, thing? And if you change the, um, on the commit, if you add a object to the commit, uh, which says visibility async. Like that? Yeah. And save that, then it should, should be returning a little faster. Um, so it should be less sluggish on the. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's, that's nice and fast. Um, okay. So then the other thing that we would need <clears throat> is like a, a client side query for the first time that we load to get the latest vote count. Yeah. So you could also set up a listener as Marius suggested in the, in the comments here, uh, we have mm -hmm. this local system, so you could theoretically also set up a listener to actually uh, listen for changes in that document and then reflect that in real time. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we, it sounds like we probably want to do a follow up to to dig further into this. Yeah. Uh, but because we're basically out of time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy this. Um, so let's get add all, and then let's check what's in here. We've got our vote for name. We've got our package. Uh, we've got the Corgi's data, and then we've got our demo. So let's um, let's get commit, and we'll say feature um, mostly working demo. Okay. So then I'm going to push this. All right. And then we're going to Netlify open. I think this is going to open my wrong browser. Oh no, it opened the right browser. Great. Okay. So then I need to go and add this to Sanity. So in my... Well, actually you're not fetching, because you're not fetching data from the client side, you don't actually need this. Uh, oh, if for we real? If fetch data from the client side, then we would need the origin. Oh, nice. Okay. So that means chat in... now basically uh go hit this website and let's so it pulled in our votes um let's there we go so now we can see that people are voting that aren't me um and so whenever i there's a lot of love for frank in here oh no chris biscori oh geez frank everybody's in for frank <laughs> and we can, oh, and we should also look, let's see in the, in the desk, if I go into this Corgi, um, we should see these update in real time, right? Yeah. So keep voting chat, keep going. Is it? Or not. Maybe it's not updating in real time. It is updating. Okay. So Chris Corgi taking a, a slow start, but way out into the lead as we wrap up the episode. Um, Espen, I am... <laughs> so, okay, so actually Chris is joking, but he, he brings up a good point in the chat. If you were trying to do this with user input where you needed some kind of a control, you would want to look into something like um, access control. You would want to have somebody log in and then, you know, store their user ID made this vote and then they can't vote more than once without creating multiple accounts. Like, you know, you could, you could do IP filtering or something, but ultimately you'd want to do something to make it a little more difficult to just sit there and mash that button. Like, like I've been doing and like I assume most people have been doing. 
Um, <laughs> so uh, there, there are a lot of ways that you would take this further. Um, oh, Frank coming from behind to a huge lead. Uh, okay, I think maybe we got to close it. This is Frank now. Um, <laughs> so Espen, where should people go if they want to learn more? They, they want to take this further. Um, definitely go to Sanity.io and check it out. We have a very active community uh, Slack, so uh, slack.sanity.io. Uh, we're pretty active there, the whole team, so if you want to talk to us and talk to other community members, uh, that's a great way. And if you want to ask me any questions, then follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash rexars, with a double X. Excellent. Um, okay, so uh, chat. Stay tuned. We've got some really fun stuff coming up this week. I am especially excited for uh, for Thursday because on Thursday I've got Nathaniel O'Kenwell coming back to the show. He's great. But what I'm really excited about is what we're going to build. We're going to build a uh, text to vote game. So you're going to be able to um, to actually participate in polls that I'm intending to show live on the stream so that if we want to have a, a game of some sort, we'll be able to actually like text votes and, and track things throughout the show. Um, and we're going to build that with Twilio. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Then uh, next week, we've got Charlie coming back. We had a little trouble getting started the first time. We got this thing under control, though. These robots are, are they're in line. We've, we sat them down, had a talk. They're going to cooperate. Uh, and then we've got Christian Nwamba coming on, and we're going to talk about Hasura doing some serverless GraphQL stuff. It's going to be super fun. Christian's amazing. If you haven't, if you've never seen his stuff before, he's a whole lot of fun. So this is going to be a uh, really fun few, a couple of weeks of content. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the show. If you want to get updates, we have a calendar. You can, um, you can add this to your Google calendar to get notified when new shows go live. That auto updates. Um, thank you again to our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Sanity, and Auth0 for making live captioning possible. Live captioning is handled by White Coat Captioning. So thank you very much. Um, with that, I think we're going to raid. So Espen, thank you so, so much for hanging out today. This was a whole lot of fun. Uh, and I'm looking forward to hopefully taking this even further sometime down the road. Um, yeah, thanks for letting me be on. It's been fun. <laughs> Chat, as always, thanks for hanging out. Stay tuned. We're going to raid. Espen, thank you. We will see you next time.